Hey friend, welcome back. It's Lauren with Rustic Honey and today, if you can believe it, it's November. And I thought since this video was airing on November 1st, we're all going to be inundated with all of the holiday things even though yesterday was just Halloween. Happy All Saints Day, by the way. As we are turning the corner and getting closer to those holidays, I thought it would be a good day to sit down and do some intentional planning for the holiday season, get ahead on some of our systems, and I'll just walk you through what I'm gonna do to plan for the upcoming season. My hope is to get a jump start on all of these things, spread out all of the tasks that have to be done. Inevitably, there's just a lot to do um, around our homes during the holiday season. So let's dive into it and get a game plan so that we can be on top of the things that have to get done and spread out those, those tasks over the next few weeks so that it's not too overwhelming all at once. And then then the ultimate goal, of course, is to be more peaceful and calm during the season so that we can enjoy the reason for the season as we near Christmas. Now, this morning, I am whipping up some of my go-to waffles for the kids. I will put this recipe in the description box below. I'm pretty sure I've shared it with y'all before, but I also have a sourdough version over on my blog, so I'll be sure to link both depending on what you want to try out. Both are equally good. If you have a waffle maker that you absolutely love, would you do me a favor and drop some comments down below because I am still using this old waffle maker I've had since like college and it doesn't cook very fast. Obviously we have a family of six now, so I would really like to have a larger waffle maker. So anyway, selfishly of me as I'm starting to make my holiday plans and my Christmas list, there's some things on there that I start to notice that would be good ideas to hint for myself because it never fails. You know, my husband will be asking or my mother-in-law or my mom, they're gonna be asking for ideas. And so I try to start making a list in very intentionally of the things that I actually would like to have um, so that I can give them good ideas. Cause sometimes I feel like I just draw a blank, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't need anything. But I think if we're intentional throughout the year with writing these things down, then it's easier to share gift ideas with other people too. One way that I've kind of created a system in this way is I have a notes app on my phone that I made a list for gift ideas and I put everybody that's on my Christmas list in that notes app and then throughout the year if I noticed like my mother-in-law said she'd really like to have XYZ then I'll try to remember to just put it in that notes app as soon as I can and then because um, if your brain is anything like mine by the time Christmas rolls around I kind of forget all of the things that my kids had said or needed it really comes in handy when you have grandparents asking what to get your kids for birthdays too so not just for Christmas gift ideas but um, it comes in handy and I really like the intentionality behind it too because then I feel like I'm giving good gift ideas or getting things that my kids actually need or would enjoy so throughout the year keeping that list is definitely a brain saver all right, I'm going to get the kids fixed up with breakfast here. And for some reason, one of my children did not want to eat waffles this morning. I don't understand why. I'm sure you have kids that do this too. But, um, and I usually don't offer to make two different breakfasts, but I have some extra eggs. So I'm going to easily just put, whip together an egg sandwich because I want, I'm trying to avoid meltdowns today. Use mayo on the outside of your sandwiches though, and it changes the grilled sandwich game, just by the way. Another note on gifts too, if you have something that's a good gift that you can repeat every year just to keep it simple, um, even the gift of cash or a certain type of gift card for a teenager in your family and they absolutely loved it, like it's, it's okay to repeat gifts because I think that the recipients love those things too and it makes it so much easier. You want to give a gift. I'm, I'm not saying gifts are the end all be all obviously, but that's one of the biggest topics around the holiday season and uh, don't make it harder than it needs to be because I think that we all want to take more time to just sit around the tree as a family, enjoy each other, and it's less about all of the gifts that are all over the floor and more about the people that are in the chairs around the tree. All right, I want to get this mess cleaned up and then I'm excited to share with you a little bit more of how I do my holiday planning. The daily cleaning list around here is long enough, but with the holidays quickly approaching, I have been getting the urge to clean every nook and cranny of our home. And I'm always looking for products that are better for us. If I'm gonna bring something into my home to clean with, I wanna make sure that it can be safe around my kids. And I'm also, of course, trying to eliminate extra waste because during the holidays, we often have excess waste in our homes from all of the gift giving and extra plastics coming in. So I am excited to share with you today's video sponsor, Blueland. 
I love that Blue Land is much more environmentally friendly than many other cleaners out there, but I have to say my absolute favorite thing is that it is free from harmful chemicals. My daughter Reese is at the age where cleaning is fun and so she wants to help me when it comes time to clean the bathrooms. And in the past um, with other cleaning ingredients, I think I would have shooed her away and said, let mommy do this part. But with Blue Land, I can let her help clean. And recently she had fun with the toilet bowl cleaners cause she can just drop them in, watch it fizz. And I don't have to worry about her touching something that's not good for her skin or being involved with any harmful chemicals when it comes to cleaning the bathroom. As a Rustic Honey viewer, you're gonna get 15% off of your first order with Blue Land. I hope you love them as much as I do. I will definitely be reordering soon. And thank you again so much to Blue Land for sponsoring today's video. All right, as we have moved quickly through the morning, I am going to get Ruth laid down for her nap. And the kids are running around outside because although here we are in this video at the end of October, it is incredibly warm and windy outside today. So they are outside running around, keeping my eye on them and trying to get this little wild one to settle down so that we can do some more holiday planning. And my intention behind all of this is not to rush straight into like the Christmas season, but to really be intentional about all of the upcoming holidays so that I can show up prepared for all of them and be able to enjoy them more instead of feeling so overwhelmed the week of. Oh, and the baby is up for the third time. So we're gonna try to get her settled down while I tell you about one of the holiday planners that I absolutely love to use. It's from Diana's channel. And I shared this on my channel last year, but she does a holiday planner that's very Christian based and it's called Less Doing More Meaning. This is not sponsored in any way. I just think it's such a great little reminder. Um, she's got lots of great little readings in here. She's even added a little bit of devotional time into her planner this year. She adds a little bit of something new every year. But um, I usually just read through the pages that have those information in them and then print out the actual planning pages that I want to use. And I just find that it's such a great way to set the tone for the season ahead and be really intentional with how I want to show up during the holiday season. Diana's planner is completely free. So I'm gonna leave you that link in the description box below too. You can check out the video that she did on it and get on her email list so that you can get the planner as well. But it's definitely a great resource and I have enjoyed using it year after year. Finally got Ruth to completely settle in. So I am gonna hit the back porch here to continue our planning. I love sitting on our back porch, especially on these nice fall days um, to do a little planning or a little work while the kids play. But it is so windy out here and it's honestly getting so hot. I don't know how long I'll be out here today. Our back porch in true life fashion is covered in dust and leaves. My mums are dying as you saw there and I also have camo sitting around in random chairs because like I said hunting season is here, bow hunting season and um, we can't have our camo in the house because then it would smell like humans you know. So let me know in the comments below if that happens at your house too. I finally have a somewhat calm place to sit here and I wanted to think through the guiding values in Diana's planner here. She talks a lot more about what we want to do more of in the season and what what we want to do less of. My goodness how helpful those questions would be honestly in any season of the year but especially during this busy upcoming holiday season. I'm chatting with everyone here on the porch. My husband happened to walk up here and I love to ask them what makes Christmas special for them too because if we can be intentional about the things that they care about and maybe the things they don't care about we can learn to let some things go too because if you're anything like me there are often things that you romanticize about the upcoming holiday season, but maybe it's not actually realistic or ever turns out the way you think it will, or it's not even important to your family. So I think that's important to sit down and be intentional about the things you really wanna put on the calendar and what you can let go of in this season. One thing that we inevitably let go of a lot during this holiday season is cash. And I have recently been obsessed with quote unquote cash stuffing, which is like the new age of cash envelopes that's just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. My YouTube friend, um, Emily, over the at the Aesthetic Dollar had I don't know, popped up in my feed at one point. I had to reach out to her and know more about her her shop and her products. And now I'm just like, I am just gonna be a loyal customer for life because I'm so excited about how this is working for our budgets year round, but I'm excited how it's going to help us out during the holidays too. 
I love watching Emily's channel. She does a cash stuffing every single week and she also does vlogs on her business. So I just love watching those while I fold laundry at night and it helps me stay really motivated to work towards our savings goals, especially with Christmas right around the corner. I don't have a whole lot in my Christmas envelope, but I did wanna mention another way that I save for Christmas is to kind of do the opposite of this, honestly, but I do use credit cards. I use a credit card for gas, online orders, and online groceries, basically. We pay it off every month and I have cash back from it. So our cash back is even up to 5% on certain things. So picking a smart credit card, you know, like being intentional with that can really pay off too. So all of our cash back cards end up helping us pay a huge chunk of Christmas. And I just wanna note that of course, this will not work for everybody, but I wanted to share my system for saving for Christmas. Let me know what works for you in the comments below. Now, Reese is so confused outside because it's like 85 degrees. The kids would love to have a milkshake this afternoon and we're playing with pumpkins. I'm, I'm honestly confused and I'm over here planning Christmas. <laughs> this is life in Missouri. This is basically what it's like. We go from, you know, 90 degrees down to 20 degrees within the course of 24 hours. It just, you never know what's gonna happen. All right, well, since we're back here in the kitchen, this would not be a holiday planning video without talking a little bit about food, right? Because that is one of the biggest things, at least in my family, it's a big thing for the holidays. So I have made things a little bit more simple over the years by keeping this little sleeve in the front of my recipe binder. And I got some good wisdom from my mom one year who said to bring the same things every year because once you hit the jackpot on a recipe, the family kind of comes to expect that you bring it. So for example, I feel like my salad that I make, it's like a harvest salad salad and the sweet potatoes my family loves. So I just do that every Thanksgiving. And then I'll also just keep all of those recipes together so that when it comes the week of and I need to order my groceries, it's just easy to grab. There's no more extra like brain work to do. I just go through the motions. And even better is if you can print out those recipes and make notes on them with how you made things ahead of time, or did you double or triple the batch? That way you don't have to think about it again. Cause again, I will not remember the next year. Now I've been promising you guys a video about my recipe binder and I almost, honestly haven't done it yet because I don't love my recipe binder right now. It's well loved, but I don't love it. And I'm hoping to redo it soon and maybe get you guys some free printable or something to go with it but this is what it looks like I use the little clear plastic sleeves and I've put recipes in them over the years you can see that my kids have helped <laughs> make notes on recipes there as well I also have a bunch of recipes that I haven't tried or have recently tried and I haven't decided if I'm keeping them in my binder yet so they go in that front little pocket but again I'm going to get that video up it's just a matter of when I can get a chance to redo my recipe binder and share a little bit more value with you there. Now I'm using Diana's planner here to map out what it's gonna look like for um, the hunting season party that we have, what I'm gonna make for Thanksgiving, and then I go to like three different Christmas events, and so I always plan food for those. So I don't necessarily have to host and have all the different sides, so I just kinda use her planner in a different way. But again, mapping that out is gonna save me so much brain space later on if I just know what groceries to order and what I'm making. And I feel like bonus points for myself this year would be to get the, those staple items or like those shelf stable items ahead of time. That way I'm not trying to order something that's a popular item the week of Thanksgiving when everyone else is buying it. And then you face that like, oh no, it's sold out. I have to rethink my whole plan. Okay, and to bring this full circle, this would not be a plan if we didn't talk about your calendar because we all know that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And the calendar is such a big part of that, or at least it is for me. If I'm not intentional about when I'm going to do these things, then it'll just go to die on that piece of paper that I printed out from Diana. So I want to make sure that I have a deadline this year on when I want to be done with my gift shopping and when I'm planning to actually wrap everything. I find myself at the last minute doing this every year and I'd really like to be intentional with setting a day aside, finding myself a babysitter and getting that done ahead of time. So. And hold me to it. I mean, I'm not perfect. Again, this comes down to a lot of like last minute things every year, but I feel like I get a little bit better at this every year. So if you're new to this holiday planning stuff, it's probably not going to work out perfect this year, but the intentional, the, the intentionality behind it will pay off in some sort of way. And you'll get better at this year after year. And I hopefully find a little bit more peace 
um, and a little bit more calm in the holidays every year as you learn to plan, you learn to prioritize what's important to your family and let go of the rest. And maybe that's the most important part. Maybe that's the one I needed to come back to as my closing statement. What to let go of. Um, That's been on my brain a lot lately, but with the holidays approaching, I think that's an important question for all of us. Again, I always love to hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you're prioritizing this holiday season, or even better, what you plan to let go of. Um, I would love to chat with you there. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse today and hanging out with us. It just makes my day. I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll stop by again very soon.